All right. In lesson 3.1, parallel lines and transversals, our learning target is to find missing angle measures created by the intersection of lines. The success criteria is I can identify congruent angles when a transversal intersects parallel lines, and I can find angle measures when a transversal intersects parallel lines. So just some quick review. Uh, if you didn't know this, then you can write this down. Vertical angles. Okay, vertical angles are angles that are created when we have intersecting lines right here. And the angles that are basically across from each other, so in this case A and B, these are vertical angles. And vertical angles have the same uh, number of degrees, and that means that they are congruent. Okay, so this is, a this is an example of vertical angles, A and B. Uh, this angle right here where my cursor is or my mouse is, and this one right here, these are also vertical angles. Okay, so that's some good review. Another review topic would be supplementary angles. Supplementary angles are angles that add up to 180 degrees. So typically we'll see them on a straight angle. We'll see this angle right here, so 140, and then 40 degrees, so this angle right here. These are supplementary because they add up to 180. Now, technically supplementary angles uh, don't need to be on a straight angle. So this 60 degree angle and 120 degree angle are supplementary angles. But for our purposes, we'll typically see um, our supplementary angles on a straight angle. Lines in the same plane that do not intersect are called parallel lines. So parallel lines are never going to intersect. Lines that intersect at right angles are called perpendicular lines. So right here we have uh, two lines that are perpendicular because they create right angles. And you'll know um, shortly that if this is a right angle, then all of these are right angles as well. And then parallel lines are lines in the same plane that never intersect. Uh, so th this little dash right here on the lines tell us that they are parallel right here. A line that intersects two or more lines is called a transversal. When parallel lines are cut by a transversal, several pairs of congruent angles are formed. Okay, so a transversal, we can see right here, this line T, this is a transversal. A transversal is a line that is just gonna intersect two or more lines, but uh, for most of our purposes, the transversals that we look at are going to be intersecting with uh, a set of parallel lines because that's going to create uh, congruent angles. Okay, and we'll talk about those relationships right now. So, corresponding angles, when a transversal intersects parallel lines, corresponding angles are congruent. Now, if you're wondering what corresponding angles are, uh, they are the same color angles. So, right here, uh, let's see, we'll start with the red that has four little angle markers here. The red angle in the top section is corresponding with this red angle over here because if you think of this as a circle uh, broken up into four angle sections, uh, the top right and the top right are going to be congruent. So remember, congruent means the same in geometry. Uh, we can think of this the same way uh, with the purple one. So this purple one right here with one ring is going to be corresponding with this purple one with one ring. And then the green with three rings is corresponds with the green over here with three rings as well. And then same thing with here. The two ringed blue angle corresponds with this angle right here. Uh, I also like to think of it as sections. So top right, top right, bottom right, bottom right, uh, bottom left, bottom left, and top left and top left. So all those pairs that I just said, they are corresponding angles. So in this example, use the figure to find the measures of A, angle 1, and B, angle 2. So we know that this angle right here is 110 degrees. And I see that lines A and B are parallel uh, because of this indicator right here. And then this line that's going through these parallel lines, this is a transversal. And typically, our transversals, we'll call them T. So if I look at this angle, um, and I'm, I'm just going to draw a little circle around here. I see that this angle, 110 degrees, is in the bottom left of this little circle that I drew. Okay. Well, to find the corresponding angle, uh, I can draw another circle around here. And I see that angle 1 is in the bottom left of this circle. And because these lines are parallel, I know that these are going to be corresponding angles. I also know that corresponding angles are congruent, which also which means that they um, have the same number of degrees. So I know that because this angle right here and this angle right here are corresponding, 
that their um, number of degrees and their angles are going to be equal here. So I know that angle 1 for part A, angle 1 equals 110 degrees. Okay, And then if you see, angles 1 and 2 are on the same line right here. So if I add angle 1 and angle 2 up, they would add up to 180 degrees because they are supplementary angles. Okay, So since they're supplementary angles, what I can do is I know that angle 1 is 110 degrees, and I'm going to get rid of my circles that I drew here. So, and I'm going to write in 110 degrees right there. Okay, So I know this is 110 degrees. I know that they have to add up to 180, so I can write an equation for part B. 110 plus angle 2, which I'll, I'll call this uh, x because I don't know this. So x. And then that they have to add up to 180 degrees. Okay. Well, I know how to solve this equation. Since I have a positive 110, I'm just going to subtract it on both sides. Now I just get x equals 70. So the angle for part B, so part B angle 2 equals 70 degrees. Okay. So we found our two missing angles using corresponding angles and supplementary angles. All right. Use the figure to find the measures of the numbered angles. So we have a lot of missing angles here. We have, we're given one angle and there's seven missing angles. But once you get the hang of this type of problem, it's actually really easy to figure out what all these angles are, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna locate the angle that I have, which is 75 degrees, and then I'm gonna find a vertical angle. Remember, the vertical angle is the one that's like directly across from the intersection, okay? So 75 and one are vertical angles. 75 degrees and one are vertical angles. If you remember, vertical angles are uh, congruent, aka they have the same number of degrees. So I know that since this is 75 degrees, this also has to, has to be 75 degrees. So I'm going to write in 75 degrees right there. Okay. Now, if I look at uh, angle 2 right here, I, and it doesn't matter which 75 I use, uh, I know that angle 2 plus angle 1 has to equal 180 degrees because they're supplementary. They're on a straight um, line, so they're a straight angle here. I know that 180 is equal to this 75 degrees plus angle 2. Uh, I'll call this x for now, and then I'll get rid of that. And I'll just deal with the numbers. I don't need the degrees. So anyway, to solve this, I have 180 equals 75 plus x. To cancel out the 75 term, I'll just subtract it on both sides. And I get 105 equals x. So now I'm just going to change this to 105 degrees. All right. And now to figure out this angle right here, well, I can use vertical angles again. This angle right here, angle 2 and angle 3, are vertical angles, so they are congruent. So if this is 105 degrees, then this is 105 degrees as well. And I'll zoom in on this. Now, to figure out what these angles over here are, I can use corresponding angles. If, I, if you remember, I can draw a little circle around here. And the corresponding angles are going to be in the same uh, kind of section of the circle that I drew. So like this would be top right, top right, bottom right, bottom right, bottom left, bottom left, top left, top left. All those angle pairs I just said are corresponding. And I know corresponding angles are congruent. So I'll just start with the 75. If this angle is 75, then angle 6 has to be 75 as well. So I'll write that in there. And then same thing here. If angle... 3 is 105, then angle 7, since it's corresponding, also has to be 105 degrees. And then you can kind of uh, find the logic here. Angle 4 is going to be 75, and I'll, I'll draw an arrow because we're running out of room. So that's going to be 75 degrees. And then angle 5 is going to be 105 degrees. All right, so there's actually many ways you can figure out what all these angle measures are. Uh, but we used vertical angles, supplementary angles, and corresponding angles here, and we were easily able to find the measure of each angle. When two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, four interior angles are formed on the inside of the parallel lines, and four exterior angles are formed on the outside of the parallel lines. So if you see right here, the interior angles are three, four, five, and six, because they're inside of the two parallel lines, 
And then the exterior angles are 1, 2, 7, and 8 because they are outside of the uh, parallel lines. Okay. Now we're going to talk about alternate interior angles and alternate exterior angles. When a transversal intersects parallel lines, alternate interior angles are congruent and alternate exterior angles are congruent. And we say alternate, what we mean is on the opposite side of the transversal, okay? So the, I'm going to zoom in here on these. First we'll do alternate interior angles. So the alternate interior angles are on the inside of the parallel lines because they're interior. And alternate means that they are on the opposite side of the transversal. So this one's on the left side of the transversal, and this one's on the right side of the transversal. And since they are alternate interior angles, I know that they are going to be congruent. So this angle has the same number of degrees as this angle right here. Same thing with the, the red one. Okay, So this angle right here is going to be on the opposite side of the transversal, but both inside the uh, parallel lines. So they are also going to be congruent. And then logically, we can think of it in the same way for the alternate exterior angles. So they're on the, they're both on the outside. So I'll start with the red one. They're both on the outside of the um, parallel lines, but they are on the opposite side of the transversal. So they're going to be congruent. And then this angle right here and this angle right here are also going to be congruent. The photo shows a portion of an airport. Describe the relationship between each pair of angles. So. So for part A, we want to find the relationship between angle 3 and angle 6. I see that these lines are parallel because of this indicator right here. So I'm going to look at 3, and I'm going to look at 6. Well, I know that they're on the opposite side of this transversal right here, going through our parallel lines. So 3 is on the bottom, 6 is on the top, and they're both outside of the parallel lines. If you look, the parallel lines are A and B. This, this section where my cursor is would be inside, and then here's the right side of it, here's the left side of the parallel lines. So since they're on the um, outside of the parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal, they're going to be alternate exterior angles. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. Alternate exterior angles. Okay, and once again, alternate exterior angles are on opposite sides of your transversal and they're on the outside of the parallel lines. For part B, we have angles 2 and 7. Well, let's look at them. Well, here's angle 2. Here's angle 7. Well, they're on the inside of the parallel lines. Okay. So since they're on the inside of the parallel lines, they're interior angles. And they're on opposite sides of the transversal right here. 2 is above and 7 is below. So they're on alternate sides of the transversal. So that means that we know that they're going to be alternate interior angles. Now we're done with this one. The stairs have a 45 degree incline. At what angles do you need to attach a rail to two parallel posts so that the rail is parallel to the incline of the steps? So let's look at this diagram right here. So I have 45 degrees here, and I have a right angle right here. Remember, a right angle is 90. So I can easily figure out angle one right here. I, I can do 90 equals 45 plus, well, for 1, I'll do x for now. x, I'll subtract 45 on both sides, and I get 45 equals x. So I know angle 1 is going to be 45 degrees. So angle 1 equals 45 degrees. Okay. Now I want to um, use some of my new tools that I figured out, my new angle relationships, to figure out the other angles. Okay. So angle 1 right here actually corresponds to angle 5 if you see that okay so if i look at if you look at this i have uh, parallel lines so this line right here and this line right here are parallel i can treat this line right here as a transversal so they're actually going to be corresponding so if i look at if i make my two circles right here angle 1 and angle 5 they're both in the top left section so angle 5 is also going to be 45 degrees okay now i'm going to erase my circles now, to find angle 4, I see angle 5 and angle 4 are going to be supplementary, so I can just add them up, set them equal to 180, and then solve. So I'll do some more scrap work right here. So 180 equals uh, 45 plus x. I'm going to subtract 45 on both sides, 
and then I get 135 equals x. Whoops, I forgot the degrees there for angle 4. So angle 4 equals 135 degrees. Now I see that I can also use alternate interior angles. I'll use these as my parallel lines and I'll use this as my transversal. Angle 5 and angle 6 are alternate interior angles because they're on the inside of the parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. So I know angle 6 right here is going to be the same as angle 5. So angle 6 is equal to 45. And then I know angle 7 is supplementary with angle 6, and I already figured out what's supplementary to, one, uh, to 45 degrees, which is 135 degrees. So angle 7 is going to be 135 degrees. And then if you look back down here, this ang these, angles, and these angles correspond. So 7 corresponds to 3. So angle 3 is going to equal 135 degrees. And then angle 2 corresponds with angle 6, so that's going to equal 45 degrees. So now we found all of the angles in this diagram, and now we're done.